Now here is a view that gets me very, very <laughs> excited. Not the crack in the window pane, which I know we've had for about six months now. Let me tell you actually, the reason why we haven't fixed this is because nobody wants to fix just one pane of glass. So we're actually having to wait until we can get someone who's coming in to replace the entire bay window upstairs that will actually be bothered to replace a single pane of glass. Very annoying, but actually, what excites me is the view outside the window. We have got the gardening trug on the table. Charlie's wheelbarrow is out. <gasps> gardening team in full force over there. And I've just popped on lots of nice warm cozy layers so I can go and join them. Are you sitting in the sunshine, my boys? <laughs> you are so lovely. Good morning, my darlings. It is a very, very blusterous morning, but it is not raining, <laughs> it's blue skies. So yes, we are gonna head out and do some winter to spring garden maintenance. We have got the full team here today. Jack is here overseeing things. Martin is here and they are trimming the hedges. Charlie is putting new compost on um, the baby trees. So obviously we've put a lot of trees in lately and just like any plants, trees need feeding, especially when they're in their growing phase. So we are cut, oh, I say we, Charlie is carting new compost, which has been delivered on the driveway and putting it at the base of the new trees. And then I think he said that our mission for this afternoon is to prune the old apple and pear trees, which is very exciting. I just can't wait to get outside. Um, this is really the time of year we were in the garden centre at the end of the last vlog, as you may have seen. Um, I really wasn't feeling very well throughout that vlog. I don't know if you guys could tell. When I was editing it, I was like, wow, Josie, your energy in this vlog is... <laughs> so I'm very sorry if you uh, felt that. But I'm feeling much better. Still a little bit nasal, <laughs> which is so annoying. Um, but I'm feeling much better. My skin is getting there. I had the peel facial four days ago now, so my skin is still in the peeling phase. And when you put makeup on skin which is peeling, the makeup just kind of clings to those areas. But this is the first time I've ever had a facial uh, peel that strong. So I'll let you know if I think it's worth it because obviously the last four or five days since having the facial, um, I've, my skin's been a little bit uncomfortable. I've had to be very conscious as to what I'm putting on it. I shouldn't really be wearing makeup, but it looks a little bit red and aggravated in places. But yeah, I'll keep you updated as to whether I think it is worth it in the long run, maybe a couple of weeks before a really special event. We shall see. Good to try these things out now. How did I get onto that tangent when I was talking about gardening? Oh, the, <laughs> the end of the last vlog. So we went to the Burford Garden Company, which is the mecca of gardening here in the Cotswolds. They have the best of everything and I just picked up, I was very restrained, I only picked up three types of seeds which I have here. Excuse my negative Covid test. So the reason why this is really exciting is because lots of seeds you have to plant them in March which is only a couple of weeks away so I'm starting to get myself organised. I definitely want to grow mange 2 this year because we eat a lot of mange 2 in things like stir fries. I thought these pumpkins just looked rather fun. And then early maturing marrows because, yeah, there's a lot you can cook with a courgette. So you can direct sow these outside in June. So I'm very, very ahead with um, those seeds. Also got the latest issue of Gardener's World, which I'm gonna look through with my afternoon coffee when we feel like we need a little bit of a break. But apparently we've got a, I'm sure it said somewhere, it had like a calendar for seed sowing. Oh, Hugh, he's a YouTuber. <laughs> There's some really interesting snippets in here if you are into your gardening. Succession sowing, that's actually really useful. So succession sowing is basically when you um, plan your raised beds so that you always have something growing. And then if one thing finishes, like if for example the leeks finished early, then you could plant something in their place afterwards and it will just kind of maximise your space. So, very, very useful. I'm going to enjoy having a flick through here later. And I will as well, seeing as that is the theme this morning, share with you the plans that Nicholson's have drawn up for our kitchen garden renovation, which I'm so excited about. It's going to be a huge, huge project um, kicking off next month, which... I mean, yeah, it's going to be sensational. Can't wait to share that progress with you. But for now, I need some coffee, I need some lunch, and I need to get outside. 
Gosh, can you hear the wind <laughs> coming down the chimney? Charlie and I are about to just walk into the village to get some bread and some eggs. And I've switched jumper because that one was getting a little bit itchy. Wanted to show you these new boots which arrived from Fairfax and Faber. These are their over knee or knee high boots. And as you can see, they have got this fluffy lining. I think that they need to get worn out and about a bit more. They need to get rough, roughed up a little bit, but they are so warm and toasty and so comfortable. Got that lovely detailing at the back there and how perfectly tonal they are with my outfit today. So for my lunch today, I have done an all plants meal. I have gone for the butternut and barley risotto, which is one of my favorites. When it's lovely and sunny outside, the last thing I want to do is spend ages cooking, but I'm definitely going to need some fuel for this afternoon's activity. So this will definitely keep me full for a long time. My discount code is JOSIEYT, which gets you 15 pounds off your first box of all plants in case you're wanting to try it. You've probably heard Charlie and I raving about this a lot. It's basically plant-based um, meals prepared by a chef and you pop them in your freezer. It takes a matter of minutes for you to prepare. This took 35 minutes in the Arga, but all I had to do is pop it in there. And obviously they are plant-based meals, but Charlie and I are not vegans, but we do try and eat a little bit less meat during the weeks. And it's just a much healthier alternative to us popping a pizza in the Argo on those days when we just can't really be bothered to cook. So I'd highly recommend checking out All Plants. This is one of my favorites um, for lunch, but then they do things like chicken, chicken katsu curries. They do um, some really nice dals, really, really delicious. So this is my lunch for the day. And then I'm gonna head out into the garden. Like the day before You're like a stone on my pillow I don't make a sound when I shut the door oh, You don't have to wake up yet oh, We can spend all day in bed Come on, Lynn. I'll put the TV in the room We'll have a Netflix your favorite music on all the way baritone oh, yeah. shut the lights go in front We have had a very, very productive afternoon indeed. We have spent several hours, it's now raining outside, so we had to had to finish our gardening, but we have carted six massive bags worth, I think that's six tons of compost to the new hedges and the new trees. So we've had a very, very productive afternoon. And now, Charlie's in the kitchen, he is cooking beef wellington and mash and macaroni cheese for our Valentine's Day date night dinner. And I am choosing a film which is having a very cosy, relaxed evening at home. These are honestly our favourite types of evenings. And tonight, I think we are going to watch the Book of Love. So this is a film that has been showing up on my recommended on Sky Cinema. It's starring Sam Claflin and it took me a few minutes to realize where I recognized him from, but he is in Me Before You. Such a tearjerker, <laughs> that film. Um, and yeah, we've both watched the, what do you want to call it? We've both watched the trailer for this and it looks absolutely amazing. So I've got it all lined up on the sky glass, ready to go. I think it'll be the perfect thing to enjoy watching together um, after we've had our dinner. And in case you're wondering why we have got a load of antique pictures on the floor here in the drawing room. We've been collecting these over the past couple of months and we finally have um, Carpenter Mark coming over tomorrow who is the only person that we trust to actually drill holes in the walls in this house. So we've basically been trying to decide where we're going to put them but we've collected some really beautiful ones. This actually really reminds me of this house. It's got a really similar 
shaped chimney, really similar kind of Georgian style windows. And then we've got um, a few other kind of farmhouse style paintings. We actually liked the frames of these, but not so much the actual pictures. Uh, so maybe we'll try and find some replacements and then some really nice watercolors. This reminds me of the hill up the public footpath. You guys might know where I mean. That has the amazing view over all the village. Um, and a couple of other really lovely kind of landscape water watercolors here. So, so we've got a few more decisions we need to make, but in a few days time, these will hopefully all be up on the walls. <laughs> Queridas. That is good morning, my darlings, in Spanish. At least, I hope it is. I have just palatoned. I did a nine, no, not 90 minutes. Oh my gosh, 20 minute 90s ride with Hannah Frankson. Actually, wasn't my favorite ride. Um, I still managed to come 3,000th out of 28,000, so not too bad. And I'm actually not going to do anything with my hair today other than leave it to dry naturally because it is pouring with rain, it's absolutely pouring outside, very depressing, um, and we're heading out for a very cosy pub lunch. We're going for a Sunday roast at a newish place called The Lamb, which is near Burford. If you watched uh, the vlog where Charlie and I went to Time, we went to The Bell in Langford. I mention all these places in case you guys are coming to the Cotswolds because they're really, really good places. The Bell at Langford is an amazing pub. It does have rooms as well and The Lamb is their new sister pub. So we've booked it to go for a Sunday roast with friends um, later today. But yeah, this is going to be cosy leggings and knitwear. Not going to make a huge effort with my hair because it'll just get ruined the second I get out of the door. So as you'll have seen, Charlie and I had our movie night last night. We did end up watching The Book of Love, which is a Sky Cinema original. And I can hand on heart say I have not enjoyed a film as much as I enjoyed the film last night in a long time. In fact, I can't even remember the last time that I watched a new film and really, really enjoyed it and thought that's the kind of film. In fact, the last time was probably Crazy Rich Asians. That was probably the last time that I watched a film and I was like, mm, that's the kind of film that I want to watch over and over again because it was so good. So I'm gonna give you a very, very brief overview just to tantalize you to watch it without ruining anything. Um, the Book of Love is about an author played by Sam Claflin. I'm actually not very good at knowing actors' names and what they've been in, but I'll pop his face up on the screen here because I definitely recognised his face, but I couldn't have told you much about him otherwise. So Sam Claflin plays Henry, who is an author. He's written a book, and let's just say originally it's a, not... It's a little bit of a flop. No one's really... You know, it's not causing much intrigue or excitement um, and he and his agents are looking through all the stats of where it's been selling and they notice that really the only place that this book is doing well is in Mexico. So they travel over to Mexico um, and there's this huge demand for him to do like meetups and he's like a local, he's like a celebrity in Mexico and he's thinking how on earth is my book so popular here um, when it's been a bit of a flop everywhere else and this isn't ruining it for you because you do figure it out pretty quickly. What has happened is his translator, when translating the book from English to Spanish, has made the book just a little bit more raunchy, so not quite Fifty Shades of Grey level, but raunchy. <laughs> So there's all these women um, at his events, at his meetups that are so emotional and excited to meet him. They're crying, they're like referring to all of these different scenes in the book. And he's like, I didn't write that. 
So I guess you would call it a romantic comedy. There is obviously a, a love interest. There's the comedy values of how the book is actually ends up being completely different to how he originally wrote it, but it's become a huge success in the way that it's been rewritten. I'm gonna leave the trailer for the film linked down below and I highly recommend you watch it because it was the trailer that um, converted Charlie into definitely wanting to watch the film as well. So if like me, you are looking for a little bit of escapism, I mean, it's literally hammering down with rain on the windows. The majority of the film is set in Mexico, so you'll be transported to a beautiful sunny climate. You want something that's gonna make you laugh, something that's gonna make you feel a little bit warm and fuzzy inside, then such a good film. As I said, I've not seen a film in such a long time that's, that I've really thought that's one that I'm gonna be watching on repeat. I've already told several friends to watch it, including our friend Nathan, who is actually going to Mexico tomorrow on a work trip, and I could not be any more jealous. <laughs> that film has just ignited my need to go and be somewhere more sunny at the moment. I know I've only been back in the UK for my fabulous trip. It's been like a month now. <laughs> But looking at the weather forecast here, we have quite literally got a week of rain ahead of us. So Nathan has chosen the most amazing time to go away. But you know, sometimes when you watch a film and you really enjoy it, you become a little bit obsessed. Well, that is, that's me this morning. I have been watching Buzzfeed videos about the cast of the Book of Love. You know a film is a hit when there's so much press about a film. Buzzfeed celeb. Sam Claflin reads first tweets, no thank you. In fact, I genuinely go as far as to say I would happily watch that film again tonight. So if you're looking for something light-hearted, fun um, to watch this evening, then I would highly, highly recommend The Book of Love. Charlie and I did actually visit Mexico. I don't know if you guys were following us um, back then. I think it was maybe four or, no, five or six years ago. We did the typical, we did the classic kind of trip to Tulum and we absolutely loved it. I think we went at a really good time of year. If I remember correctly, it was around March. <laughs> Maybe we can book a last minute trip this year. And the food, the people, the beaches, the weather was just absolute perfection. In fact, we went to this place, um, what was the name of it? Cas not Casa Malca. maybe it was Casa Malca, and it was basically Pablo Escobar's old house in Mexico, which is now a really luxurious um, hotel and restaurant. We had the most amazing dinner there, in fact, Charlie's uh, starter had grasshoppers on it. I was not feeling quite so adventurous, but I remember how everything was just so fresh. The cocktails were amazing, and this film just brought back all of those memories. Oh my goodness, what I would do, what I would do to be going on a Mexican adventure, my goodness. I need to pop on a nice, warm, cozy outfit now because we need to leave in 15 minutes to get to the pub. So, what shall I wear? And I've ended up going from thinking about being on a beach in Mexico to being in my thickest knitwear. I have a lovely new pair of earrings from Majuri. These gorgeous little pearl, I think you call them pearl jackets, where they wrap around. Um, I've actually not even tried these on yet. I've got a feeling they might actually be a little bit big for my ear. I always think that adding pearls to a Chunky knit is just such a nice way of making it a little bit more feminine, a little bit more elegant, but still quite subtle. So perfect if you're literally just going to a pub for a roast. Probably noticed from the vibe of my vlogs, but I feel like my energy levels still haven't properly picked up again. And I think this weather really doesn't help either. I've had this cold now and yes, I've lateral flowed and PCR'd and all the rest um, and it's just standard old cold. I've had this cold for eight days now and normally I'm really good at shaking things off but I just don't fully feel like myself from an energy level point of view. Um, to this morning's Peloton is the first one that I've done in a little while so it feels good to be back on that but I think when you're vlogging everything is very much emphasized especially <laughs> your energy and your the vibe that you're giving off. So I have actually not I did actually notice a couple of comments like Josie your videos aren't quite like, you know, I can't remember the wording that people use, but they were like, they're not quite there. Um, and I feel like it's because I just haven't really felt 100% lately. But hopefully now that I've, I'm starting to feel much better, 
they will start to get back to their usual bubbly and uplifting positive kind of vibe fingers crossed what fragrance shall i wear today i've had a couple of new ones come in actually i had a lovely delivery from tom ford a top up of their rose prick fragrance and if you like a rose scent but you want something that's very mature and sophisticated then this is the one it's a very intense rose fragrance it's quite a nice contrast between a cozy outfit like normally i'd go for something a bit more ambery a bit more musky but that is just absolutely gorgeous right i need some cozy cashmere socks and we're ready to go charlie's weekend task is sharpening the knives what's the process here then so sharpening knives is a real art i'm <laughs> not good at it because basically if you have this is what i learned at the dalesford cookery class these are japanese knives so they're folded steel folded ja japanese knives are widely accepted to be the best but they're also the hardest to use and the hardest to sharpen mm. whereas western knives which are like french brands or european brands are um normally they're just stainless steel so that's when you use a honing rod and you see people using a honing rod or using a knife sharpener right you wouldn't you, you shouldn't use a knife sharpener on japanese knives oh so this is a western knife um so what you can use is a whetstone which is this stone like thing i've tried using that and was that I, that gray block that yeah, you had and, and I, that really is an art like you watch people on youtube and i couldn't get to grips with it because you have to hold the knife at the right angle yeah which is why this thing which i got from borough kitchen online right this so that's the 20 degree angle right it's magnetic yeah look so it sits there mm -hmm. it sticks the knife at the 20 degree angle yeah then this has the rubber wheels look Oh my gosh. This was about 200 pounds, no, 180 pounds. But bear oh in mind, God. a lot of people send their knives off to be sharpened. Yeah. And that'll cost a couple of hundred quid. Right. So anyway, then what you do is you use this side, which has got diamond, uh, it's like a diamond grit thing, to initially sharpen them right up to the blade like that, look. Ooh. And it just rolls. <gasps> look. Wow. And then to finish it off, you go on this side. And then I'm also doing a little bit more admin where I'm putting this, which is an anti-rust thing which I got from Noaki. Right. These are not stainless. So as you can see they can rust. Yeah. Sticking that on them. And then wow. chameleon oil on the wooden handles because oh when you're washing gosh. them. And I've also oiled that look. So I'm just doing a bit of admin really. But, <laughs> a bit of knife admin. Um, but this is the thing, like it's satisfying but it's all well and good buying expensive knives, but if you don't look after them, yeah. you might as well not have expensive knives, right? True. Um so yeah look there you go. Gosh that's amazing. You obviously have to be careful because you're dealing with what are sharp utensils. Yeah. Um, but I think the key, the key with a, a sharpening a knife is getting the right angle because obviously, and for example, look, I buggered that up <gasps> with the whetstone. I can get that out. Shit. I can get that out in a minute. Can you? Yeah, we're using this. That's the whole point. Oh, wow. Um, oh, that's a horrible noise though. Well, initially it's horrible. And then it smooths off. Yeah, so it's all about the angle. Wow. And apparently, once you've used this a few times, it does become easier to maintain the angle. Gosh. So yeah, it's a whole lot. It's, it's, it's mad, isn't it? Like, you think you buy a sharp, expensive knife, and that's it. But obviously, the more you use it, it's like I've just bought these new knives, and obviously they're recently sharpened, mm. and they're just so nice to use, and that's what all of those should be like, Yeah. because I've not sharpened them. I did a bit of sharpening for Christmas. <laughs> Yeah. You treated yourself. So look, there you go, get that in there. Then I just wipe that clean. And I'm putting this on there. Oh, wow. Which just brings it up a bit more. Oh my gosh. Obviously these don't go in the dishwasher, but even when you're washing them regularly. And then this is the, this is actually called bog oak. Bog oak. This wood. And you just put a bit of chameleon oil on. Get that back. Be careful and just just feeds the wood camellia oil. Mm. I think it's a very natural oil camellia oil, isn't it? Probably. So yeah, and just let that sit for a second. There we go. There you go. And there's your knife maintenance. Oh, <laughs> what do you think to that, Dexy? Your hair is looking quite questionable after your little expedition outside in the rain. Oh, mummy, don't, don't talk about my hair. You know I'm self-conscious. Still filling and nutritious, and 
and it's quite creative. And we are back home again. I didn't pick up the vlogging camera too much while we are out, other than to show you my roast. We came home to find that the dogs had managed to escape the kitchen and had free run of the house while we were out, which is very, very naughty. I think it might have been your brother though. I don't think you're to blame, little one, are you? very naughty obviously the sunday roast was wonderful we had great company um but i was a little bit disappointed by the food and the coffee considering we had very high expectations with it being the sister pub to the bell um but i think we're going to give it another try when it's not a sunday roast because sometimes it's a different chef on sundays i mean it was fine if it was any normal pub it would have been absolutely fine but i just thought it was going to be something a little bit special which unfortunately it wasn't i did have to laugh though because only in the cotswolds do you get bougie aesop hand soap and hand cream in the bathroom so it was a lovely experience and yeah great company with lucy and will but i'm gonna go and take my makeup off now and i think we're just gonna watch we're watching something called the is it the informant no the responder i think we're just gonna have an early night <laughs> surprise surprise watch something with the boys and i will see you tomorrow <laughs> journey i hope you guys don't mind when i do these car um dashboard cameras facing what i'm seeing but i just find all of these roads so beautiful every journey that i make i'm just speechless with how beautiful the lanes are around here and i just want to share it with you so i hope you don't mind these dashboard cameras um but yes i am down in long compton this morning for a pedicure which I'm very much looking forward to, a little bit of pampering to kickstart the week. And I've been listening to my favorite classical pianist playlist on the way here. And I don't know if I'm the only one that does this. <gasps> there is a dog in the nail studio this morning. Oh my goodness, how exciting. Um, oh, I can't get through that way. Right, okay, reverse. Sorry, I had to concentrate on reversing. I sometimes find myself almost like fantasizing about being able to play these amazing pieces on the piano. Like imagine just being able to go to a, someone's house or those pianos in airports or train stations. And imagine just being able to play the most amazing tune on the piano. Do you not think that would just be the coolest thing ever? Often when I'm listening to a really beautiful piece of music, I kind of imagine that I've just sat down at a piano and I've just being able to like whip it out maybe that's just me being very strange let me know if you guys ever have any weird um daydreams like that but yes it is the most beautiful day today and uh, 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 there we go i'm three minutes early and i think i'm her first appointment of the day so i'm not gonna rush in there um before my time there was something that i needed to tell you this morning and i can't remember what it is 
can't remember, but I'm wearing my Kate Middleton jumper. This is from Holland Cooper and Kate Middleton wore this on the television lately. I think she was reading some children's stories and she was wearing this. I have a feeling I've actually shrunk mine a little bit because it's now very tight on the shoulders. Never mind. Anyway, I'm gonna head in for my petty and I'll see you later. Oh, pretty girl. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, this one, this oh. one. Okay, so I'm back from my pedicure. I had the lovely company of Bella while I was having my pedicure done. She was a very sweet rescue dog and she was very intrigued in the whole pedicure process, <laughs> watching Yerga's every move. And I've had a couple of deliveries since we've been out. The sun sadly has gone. It's now pouring with rain. So you might be able to hear in the background, Charlie is lighting the fire and I'm gonna do my work in the living room this afternoon next to the cozy, the cozy stove. We've had a delivery from Katie Loxton, and I believe this is something edible to celebrate love this Valentine's Day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is one of those smashable chocolate hearts. We've got some metallic little lips, some marshmallows, to Jessie and Charlie. We've got a new girlfriend, darling, I've not, <laughs> I've not heard about. <laughs> Celebrate Valentine's Day with Katie Luxton and smash the heart for a surprise. We hope you enjoy the gift and sweet treats. I might let you do the honours, darling, smashing this heart. And then something from Charlotte Tilbury. Charlotte's award-winning magic cream. Charlotte always says skincare is self-care and self-love. So we are gifting you our iconic award-winning magic cream moisturizer, the first product that Charlotte ever created and now a global bestseller. I actually didn't realize that was the first product that she ever created. Ooh, especially engraved. Mm -hmm. Oh, Charlie, you've got your own Charlotte Tilbury magic cream with magic Charlie oh, nice. I love that. engraved on the lid. <laughs> I don't know if you meant to use it. Yeah, well they do have a night cream, but I actually prefer using the original as a night cream as opposed to using the actual night cream. So here we have it, our personalised Charlotte Tilbury Magic Creams, Magic Josie and Magic Charlie. What a lovely treat, thank you very much Charlotte Tilbury. Do you want to come and break my heart? <laughs> What's this? That's chocolate? Yep. You can have that for our pudding later. Oh wow. Stab What's it. in there? I don't know. It's a surprise. Oh, wow. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. Is it a gift card? Oh, Ooh, wow. La la. Nice. So we have got a selection of treats inside. Some Katie Loxton biscuits, a little cake pop, and a gift card. What an absolute treat. Totally spoilt by some of my favourite brands this Valentine's Day. <laughs> So it's currently 3.40 and Charlie and I have both said that we just feel like we could go to bed already. Energy levels today are seriously low and I don't know if it's this time of year, if it's the weather, if it's the fact that I've just had a little bit of a cold this week but gosh, I just felt very unproductive and unenergetic the last few days and I really just need to get myself out of this low energy funk. Um, don't normally take my makeup off at 20, 20 to 4 in the afternoon but I thought seeing as I'm going to do the rest of my work today sat down in the lounge by the fire, I don't have any zoom calls or anything, I thought I would just get some really nice skincare on my face. Even when I lived in London if I had like an afternoon or a morning even and a lunch meeting, I would always take my makeup off the second I got home. I just think it's always a nice idea to have skincare on your face as opposed to makeup as much as possible. I'm going to use the L'Occitane Cream to Foam Cleanser. This is one that I've got ongoing in my basket. It's a really nice gentle one as well because as I've mentioned about 10,000 times, my skin is just a little bit strange at the moment following my peel. It is actually peeling in places, in other places it's just red. I've noticed a few more blemishes coming up. I don't know if that's what's meant to happen after a peel or if maybe my skin's just a little bit too sensitive because I don't know, I guess I just thought I would <laughs> have good skin by now. And that 
and having bad skin also really knocks my confidence so that's probably another reason well I've just not been why well, I've just not been my chipper usual self but ah, so I do apologize because I know it's not as fun watching someone when they're you know not not on top form but I promise <laughs> this is the last vlog where I will be not 100% because I'm going to get up tomorrow morning I'm going to do I think I'm going to do some bar because it's not quite as intense as doing a spin so I won't time myself out have a really pampering shower um, and then I'm just going to be back to my usual self that's what I'm that's what I'm telling myself anyway I don't even know if you guys can see the rain it's so strange because it looks like it's blue skies over in the background and yet it is absolutely tipping it down and you see it bouncing off the car Hopefully it might give the car a good clean though. I swear the blue skies are coming back now. It genuinely might be a really nice afternoon. So maybe we can go and take the dogs for a walk a little bit later. I'm just gonna mist my surroundings with the soothing atmosphere mist from Espa. Oh, something about this smell, which in the nicest way possible smells a little bit like a mosquito spray. Maybe it's got some of the same ingredients as citronella. I think it might be geranium actually. That reminds me of mosquito spray, which makes me think of holidays. I will probably do an entire skincare routine again before bed, um, but just for now, just for my skin to enjoy while I'm doing my work down by the fire. Um, this is the Shantikai Rose de Mai Face Oil, and I feel like a nice oil is what my skin is craving at the moment. It's still very tight, especially around my mouth and today my forehead is the area that's peeling hmm this used to smell like rose and now it just smells a bit funny how long are you meant to have this open 12 months i think i've probably had that for more than 12 months and there's only this much left i actually think i'm going to throw that away <laughs> probably not the best thing to put on my skin while my skin is very sensitive because yeah that definitely does not smell of rose anymore and it very much used to anyway i am going to head downstairs sit in front of the fire with my boys with my laptop and try to be a little bit more productive this afternoon but then i say that and i i beat myself up over not being productive but actually when i think of everything i have done this morning even while i was getting my pedicure done i ticked a few things off my to-do list because i took my laptop with me so i have actually been productive i just feel i just feel low energy if you guys know the feeling and you have any tips on how to get yourself out of this kind of funky mood please share them down below because i'm 100 percent sure that i'm not alone in just going through just periods where it's like a week or 10 days where you're just not feeling 100 percent yourself um and i'm sure I'm sure everyone goes through that every now and then so let me know darlings what you do to lift yourself out of these modes and yeah i'm gonna go and relax now relax i'm gonna go and work in a more comfortable environment so darlings i'm gonna end the vlog here and i will see you on sunday for the next one and from then on i promise they're gonna be a lot more positive spring is on its way we have lots to look forward to <laughs> all right darlings have a lovely evening. I'll see you soon.